Well, hey there, welcome into another episode of Drummer Daily. My name is Daniel Hadaway. I hope you are having a great time doing whatever you're doing. Um, it is, well, when I'm recording this, it's in September. And so in my mind, I was actually having this conversation with my wife today. I was like, you know, in my mind, September is fall. It's the beginning of autumn. Uh, but around Nashville, where I live, it seems like September is just another month of hot summer. It is so hot here still. Um, and so I am looking outside and thinking about how sweaty I would be if I was out there right now. Um, but this is episode number 157, and uh, I wanna thank you for joining me as always. Um, I have an email today from an awesome listener, and uh, he actually sent me a, uh, a lot of questions. And so I replied back and said, hey, can I kind of split this up into a couple of different podcast episodes over the course of the next few weeks? Um, and he said, yeah, that'd be great. And so I'm going to tackle part of his question today. And um, I, I love this question because, um, uh, well, I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just read the question and then maybe I'll tell you why I love it. All right, so he says, I have no recording equipment or experience, so uh, um, I don't have much of a clue uh, on that front, but I'm gonna be taking a music technology course next year, so hopefully this should help. What recording stuff should I initially invest in, do you think? And of course he's talking about as a drummer, wanting to start tracking some of his own drums, putting some of his own videos out there, things like that. And um, I definitely think that's, the reason why I love that question is because um, he's not, he, I, I do get replies and I get emails sometimes where people are like, I don't have this thing, I don't have that, I can't do it because of this, I can't get started you know, getting myself out there because of, I don't have this piece of equipment or I think I should have this piece of equipment and I don't. Um, and that, that to me comes across like someone saying, I, here's my excuse why I can't follow this path and start becoming a professional drummer. Uh, but this listener said, hey, I don't have anything, but I wanna get started. So what is the, what, what do I need to get started? What's the bare minimum? What's the thing I need to, to have to get started? And uh, I have, thankfully I have an answer for you. So uh, I think we did a recent episode. So if you, uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to link to this in the show notes for today's episode. So if you go to danielhadaway.com slash 157, I'll have a link to this video, but I actually did a video recently where um, I showed how you can record drums with just a single microphone. And uh, if you spend some time working on mixing it and EQing it a little bit and also work on your playing, um, you can get a pretty decent sound out of one microphone. Now, in certain situations, the single microphone setup would actually be good enough for some recording. Um, it's definitely good enough for you know posting Instagram or Facebook videos or YouTube videos or whatever else you might wanna do just to start showing others what kind of a drummer you are. So, I definitely think that that is the place you wanna start. You want to start with one microphone, and if, and if I had to pick, if I had to say what is one microphone that you should have, you need to have a Shure SM57. And that should be easy to remember because this episode is 157 and the microphone is the SM57. Now this microphone is, has been around for, gosh, probably uh, 40 years, maybe 50 years now. It's been around for a long time. And it really hasn't changed um, in all that time. And the best part about it is that it is cheap. Uh, you can get a brand new one if, without a discount. I believe the list price on these microphones is $99. But a lot of stores, uh, you know, I know like Musicians Friend and Guitar Center, they send out, send out those 20% off coupons all the time. Um, and so you can get 20% off right there. But also a lot of retailers will sell these for, you know, $79, $85 pretty regularly, brand new. And then lots of people have these for sale used. And if you keep your eyes open and find the right place, you can probably get one for around 50, 50 to $70 used. And uh, unless they're broken, uh, they're pretty sturdy microphones and, uh, uh, I have several that I use and I love them. They're, they're the microphone that I use for my snare drum, uh, top and bottom now even. That's the, they're they're kind of like the de facto standard. So it's great to get a microphone. I always think if you're gonna start with anything miking of your drums, I don't believe in investing in something really cheap now and then 
having to replace it later. I'd rather find something that I can, uh, you know, like for example, this SM57, the Shure microphone that I'm talking about, you can, to start with, have it be the one microphone that points kind of at a certain spot. You can watch this video that I mentioned uh, that I'll have a link to in the show notes. Um, but kind of put a microphone in one spot there and it will mic the whole kit. But then later, if you do choose to add more microphones, you can then move the same microphone that you already have over to the snare or to the toms even, um, and even in some cases as overhead microphones. So uh, I like the idea of finding something that'll work now, but then you don't have to try to lose any money by selling it later and buying something different. You can just keep it forever. Um, and the SM57 is definitely um, a good choice for that. Now, you'll need a way to, re- to plug that in either to um, your iPhone or uh, your computer. So you'll need an interface, a recording interface of some kind. Um, and there are all different kinds of options. I actually have um, I'm actually going to roll over here while I'm recording this podcast and look. I have a M Audio. It's called an M Track two by two. Um, and now this is not what I record with most of the time. I have a, a Behringer, a more expensive unit, up in my studio. But uh, in my office here, where I use for just some overdubs, or I might record guitars or something else for um, for drum videos, um, I have this little guy, this M Audio M Track two by two. And it's got one microphone input and one instrument input, which is where you can plug a quarter inch, like a you know a guitar or something into it like that. Um, and it's great. I think it's less than a hundred bucks, brand new. So, um, and that's definitely not the cheapest one. You can find little interfaces for around 50 bucks or less, um, but it's gonna depend on your recording situation. But honestly, you just need a microphone, maybe a stand to put the microphone on, a cable and an interface. And then of course the computer or however you're gonna you know record you know, what what you're going to use to record onto. But that's all you really need. Um, But I really do believe, here's the thing. Um, If you are just getting started recording your drums, I actually believe that going with a single microphone setup is the best choice as a drummer, as for, for our playing. And I'll explain why in a second. But what I'm saying is there are lots of really great, pretty good quality like sets of microphones you can get with you know a bunch of different you can you can have a different mic on each tom you know and the overheads and the kick drum and the snare have a different mics and then you can start mixing um and and mix all those together in software later um but i actually don't believe if you're just getting started out and you've never really recorded yourself before i actually think that that can do more harm than good for a couple of reasons the first reason is it can become really distracting to get caught up in the mixing of the drums uh, after you've recorded them. So what I'm saying is, yeah, you, you at least for me, I know, um, I play the drums and I record them and then you know it can be easy for me to spend all of my time and effort in the mixing process and trying to handle 10 different tracks of drums or whatever, 20 different tracks of drums uh, in, in, in mixing all of those and get distracted away from focusing on my playing. And it can be overwhelming and I can actually end up with a sound that's not as good simply because I'm not doing a good job of managing all those different channels. Sometimes having more choices is not a good thing, uh, especially when we're first starting out. So that's the first reason. The second reason why I think it's better to start with one microphone is that it really makes you focus on adapting your playing as a drummer to the microphone situation. So what you'll probably notice, if you if you start recording with one microphone, you will probably notice the first time you do it, man, this, this piece or that piece is really loud or too quiet or whatever it is. You'll notice the balance is off a little bit. And in those situations, there could be one of two issues. One could be just the microphone's not placed well, which again, that's part of learning to record is learning to place microphones properly. But Another piece of it is you can do a lot to help that situation by changing how you play. Maybe you hit the cymbals not quite as hard or you hit that kick drum a little harder or whatever it is. Um, But learning to adapt your playing to how the microphones are set up is a huge part of recording drums, even with lots of microphones. But it's a lot easier to hear the issues that you might have with that inter drum volume and dynamics when you only have one microphone because there's no like, oh, I'm just gonna turn the toms down because they're too loud. It's more of, oh, I need to not hit the toms so hard, that kind of thing. So 
to answer the question, uh, you said, what should I initially invest in to start recording? I would say one microphone and just a really cheap recording interface just to get started. And then the, 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 the point at which I believe you should look at upgrading your gear is always when you feel like you were kind of running up against the limitations of your gear. Um, and that's the same thing I believe about drums and cymbals and every other piece of gear we have as drummers is don't upgrade until you feel like you really are hitting your head on the ceiling as far as what that piece of gear can provide to you. And then you move forward and upgrade something. Um, but I don't like getting the, uh, what I call gear acquisition syndrome. Uh, I like to try to avoid that. And I love trying to make the most of what I have. And hopefully you will too. That's a great question and I hope you get started. Like I mentioned, if you want to see that video I mentioned about recording with, I believe the video actually has one microphone and then two microphones as well. Um, go to danielhadaway.com slash 157 and I will have a link to that video there. Thank you for joining me so much. I am so glad that you chose to join me and we will talk again very soon here on Drummer Daily. Bye for now.